Are you Invictus? Clint, are you Invictus? Are you Invictus? What does it mean? You know, when I started the Invictus Mind podcast, uh, you know, my goal was to unite a bunch of people who had a similar ideology or a similar characteristic traits. Invictus means unconquerable. It's, a, it's a, an old uh, Greek word for means unconquerable. Unconquerable. It, honestly, I'll just be totally honest. It was a it was a new concept to me. I had to Google it when you sent it to me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I do my best. Tell me about what the show. What what is, what is your audience looking for? Tell me. This is your first time here. This is the number one program dedicated to helping individuals maximize their potential and truly become unconquerable. Here we have discussions about what it takes and what it means to experience and magnify political freedom, financial freedom, and spiritual freedom. Yes, I would absolutely say that. I'm going to keep getting up, right? And I keep getting up and I keep pushing forward. And that's the type of mindset that you need to have. I, I never lose hope. I never lose faith. My mindset has always been, if I want something, I don't give up. So let me tell you what is the number one issue when it, when it comes to being unconquerable. Okay. And the number one word you have to think about here is not intelligence, not savvy, not strength, none of those things. The number one thing is resilience. You know I'm Invictus, come on. All right, I'm Invictus AF. Well, may I have an initiation question for my tribe? Okay. Are you Invictus? I believe I am. So yes, I agree. I am Invictus. I totally agree, man. And and I think that if there's anybody on this planet that's unconquerable, it's probably me. I am not the type to take orders, and I'm definitely in a position that uh, I can I can stand up for myself right now. So. And I was like, no way! I know what that word means now. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Very cool concept for a show. Uh, you didn't ask me if I was Invictus. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Invictus Mind podcast. This, of course, is your host, Mike Corbell. And today I have a very special guest joining me. Now, I've had the privilege of knowing her since 2019. But recently, after a business trip to Detroit, Michigan, and once again to Orlando, Florida, I've been able to make a stronger connection with her. I've asked my guests to join me for this podcast because I believe and I really feel that she has a tremendous story to tell that is truly inspirational. On this show, we cover a variety of topics, and of course, my mission is to help listeners identify and magnify the tools it takes to become unconquerable. That is what Invictus means. Here we discuss what it takes to achieve political freedom, financial freedom, and of course, spiritual freedom. If you are new to the program, we occasionally get into deep philosophical discussions about politics and religion, but since I have a professional background in the financial services industry, I believe that an important element to becoming unconquerable is understanding how money and business works. My guest today is the chief executive officer of a business consulting firm out of Southfield, Michigan. Her education includes two master's degrees, one in accounting and finance and another in management. Her professional background includes being a personal banker at JP Morgan Chase Bank, as well as Fifth, Fifth Third Bank. She was awarded the prestigious professional designation of master financial professional and chartered asset manager. Her company named QT Business Solutions specializes in helping entrepreneurs write and develop business plans and grant proposals to acquire business financing. Once again, she and I were introduced in 2019 when she became affiliated with World Financial Group and was quickly promoted to senior marketing director in only 10 months. She now runs a successful second business with offices in Michigan and Oklahoma and has no intention of stopping there. Her friends and business partners lovingly call her the queen of the north. So I'd love to welcome Miss Tina Williams. How are you doing today, Tina? Awesome. I love that introduction. <laughs> Great. Well, so I noticed that everyone starts calling you the Queen of the North, and I have to admit that I'm probably the only one on the planet who's never seen Game of Thrones. Oh, so man. you have to explain a little bit about what that uh, that moniker means. <laughs> So, well, the Queen of the North, and there were there were some people fighting to be the Queen of the North inside of uh, a Game of Thrones. But Mr. King, who is my senior marketing director at World Financial Group, actually dubbed me the Queen of the North because you guys are in Chicago and I'm in Michigan. And I came on to World Financial Group and just quickly became, you know, a senior marketing director. So he's like, she's the queen of the North. And then I love Game of Thrones. So I'm like, ooh, thank you. 
Awesome. Well, it's a great name. You know, I think that uh, you're probably one of the hardest uh, working people that I know. And, uh, you know, I had the privilege of uh, seeing you move your office when we went to Detroit just a couple of months ago. And so, I, I, you know, I got I to be honest, it was like the first time I've been to Detroit in like 30 years and, and you were very hospitable to me and, and it was a great event. Oh, it was so fun. I was so glad. And I love the video that you put together of the event. It was awesome. Yeah. So for those listening, I have explained, I, I'm starting a side hustle doing videos for uh, g- different conferences and things of that nature. And so that's how I got to know Tina a lot better. I got to see uh, her team and, you know, and how she runs things up in, uh, up in Detroit and, and once again in Orlando, and we're probably going to connect at least uh, every three or four months for whatever conferences we have as, as this thing grows. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love traveling. I mean, since I joined this business, I've been traveling maybe every two to three months now. And it's just become a a, um, a a way of life now. I didn't travel that much before joining World Financial Group. Now I do. I, I had to learn how to actually get my business running like a business so that I can leave and everything doesn't break and then also still do that. So it actually helped me even become a better business owner because now at first I was like more of an operator because I had to work inside of my business, but now I can leave for for months at a time or at least uh, in January, I was in uh, Florida for from January 4th to the 16th. And, you know, my QT business solutions ran without a hitch, you know, customers still got supported. Um, We helped people get business funding, you know, all while I was in Florida having fun at the World Financial Group Convention. And then I took my grandbabies uh, to Disney. So it was, it's just been a, a dream come true. Yeah, I like what you said there when you operate your business like a business. Unfortunately, many people run a business like a hobby and then they wonder why it pays like a hobby. (laughs) that is so true and you know what we all fall victim of it you know um we we feel like sometimes we feel like we have to do uh, nobody's going to do it as as good as you are and actually sometimes that's true but um i am an alumni for the from the goldman sachs 10k small businesses and um inside of that they taught me that it was okay to let someone else, uh, you know, add something to my business, let somebody else's personality maybe influence how the customer receives their, their service. Um, and then as long as they can do what you can do, 80% as good as you can do it, then you should let them do it and you should not do it. So I, so that was, that was my mindset change. Cause they were like, okay, if they can do it 80% to your level, they're not going to be able to do it to hundred percent your level, but if they can do it 80% to your level, let them do it. And you should not do it. And that's really just freed my life up at this point. Right. Right. Yeah. I definitely want to talk about world financial group, uh, as obviously you and I met there, but uh, I, I am interested in, uh, in learning about uh, your other business, QT business solutions. That was um, your, your primary love, I suppose. Uh, yeah. That was something that you started back in the year 2000, correct? Yes. Yes. So we, um, I'm an ex banker and, um, I find found that a lot of people would come to the bank, just, they did, they wanted money. They had great businesses. However, they didn't know how to present their packages to the banker. When you come to the banker, you have to know why you need the money. You need, you have to know exactly how much you need. You, you have to know how much you can going to be able to pay back and you have to know what you're going to use the money for that is going to cause you to create more revenues. You mm-hmm. can't just simply want the money. You want it. You want to be able to show that you need this money for this specific purpose, and this is going to help us create intense or more revenues. Um, and so I found that a lot of smaller uh, business owners or my pops, they might not have thought about that. And uh, unfortunately, they got declined because they were coming to the bank saying, hey, I need money. I need a business loan. But they, that was it. That's all they knew is that they need a business loan. And, and that's just not what you, you have. You, get, you have to do something different. Mm-hmm. So we write business plans. And we go through like a really, really intense um, going through. I mean, if you've never done it, 
even if you're in business right now, what do you need to run your business? How much is your office rent? How much is your insurance? We're putting these line items on the business plan. Do you need to hire an assistant? How much that is that going to cost? And we put the salary of that person on there. How much are you going to make? That's the other thing. A bank is not going to lend money to someone that says that they are not taking a salary because they realize that if you don't take a salary for yourself, you're probably not going to pay them back. So in the business plan, we have to actually put what you are going to pay yourself. And that's another reason why I liked QT Business Solutions and World Financial Group, because how much do you pay yourself? What, but if you don't actually go through your personal finances to kind of know, I want to be able to travel. I want to have this type of house. I want to take my babies here and there. If you don't know what you need monthly to get paid from your business, because you're in business to do what you want to do, not work at the job. You in business to make your life like it's golden and live it, you know? So what is what does that number look like? We have to define that. And then we put that line item in the business plan and say, you know what, $5,000 a month is what the business has to make for me. I have to be able to get 5,000 or 10,000 for me to work 40. And here's the thing, as an entrepreneur, you're not gonna work 40 hours. You're gonna be working 80 hours at that business. That's your baby. So for you to be giving up, 40 to 80 hours your week, what does that business have to pay you back in order for you to live your life like it's golden, you know, and, and build it up? And so that's something that I love doing, uh, really putting the numbers together so that they truly understand what the actual cost to run business is, and then so that they can plan for creating revenues. Because if you know what you're doing, you know how to market, you know how much you need to spend, you, you know that you need these people here, then you know, okay, I have to have this much payroll and these things are going to happen for me. Right. right. I remember I was taking a sales. I actually uh, majored in uh, sales and marketing in college. And uh, I learned how to put together a, 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 a simple business plan and, of course, a marketing plan. And as soon as I got out of college, I remember meeting a woman and she had an idea for a business. And I'm like, I could put a business plan together for you. And so I, I put together this uh, this 20 page thing with a, with a bunch of tables and spreadsheets and stuff. But I, I really didn't know what I was doing. I only had, you know, one one or two classes in college. But uh, it sounds like somebody like you, it, it really helps entrepreneurs where, uh, you know, you can think about all that stuff, especially like you said, the uh, how much income or how much of a salary the, uh, the proprietor is going to have, because. I, I've met lots of business owners who, you know, they think about themselves the last and it's like, that's probably not the right approach right there. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have to, you have to think of yourself first because that's your baby. It's your baby. You would give everything to it and it will take everything. <laughs> yeah. It will take it. If you, if you do that. So if you uh, are in the business, if you're going into business, you have to set up a uh, weekly pay for yourself. And no matter what, that's what your pay is, you know? So you better hump and make sure all the bills get paid. And that, and I, what I do is I, I have my people actually set up actual payroll. Like, you know, we use ADP um, and with goods, we are QT Business Solutions and the affiliate of, with ADP. And we can help people set that up. But um, ADP is one of the largest payroll services providers in the United States. Um, nine out of 10 people get paid through ADP at a job. And so they specialize in small business, um, small businesses. And I even had the person set up ADP. If they're the only employee, they still get a, a W-2. The other thing that's good about getting a W-2 is when you go to buy a car, you don't have to bring your whole business tax returns. Because here's the thing. Most of the time, your business is going to be a, you know, working at a, at a loss. Um, especially in the beginning. So if you have to, uh, you know, get a car or something like that, you got to bring your business tax returns and it's at a loss. Okay, you're not going to get the, the car. But if you pay to yourself consistently through ADP, even if the business is at loss, all you got to do is take your last two months of paycheck stubs for which you actually got deposited into your bank account, personal bank account, doesn't have anything to do with your business that might be working at a loss. 
Oh, well, that's a, that's a great idea. Actually, I hadn't even thought about something like that. But, uh, you know, I, lo- I love talking to entrepreneurs on this podcast, Tina, because uh, as we've seen in 2020, there, there's no such thing as job security. Mm-hmm. And you probably realized that a long time before 2020. But, uh, you know, when the government comes and says you're not an essential worker, we could just shut your your business down for whatever reason. You know, uh, you know, we can talk about COVID or whatnot, but uh, um in my in, in my judgment, having a, a business or a side hustle or something that you own uh, the the source of your income is probably the surest way to 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 achieve freedom in this world because you, you know you have to take responsibility for you know what you're making, what you're earning, who you're talking to. Whereas if you have a job, you're at the mercy of that employer. Right, I totally agree with you. Um, you have to have you have to have multiple strands of income. You can have a job. But don't only have a job, have other streams of income that uh, come to you, you know, number one, you know, you can you can open up, uh, well, you can join us at World Financial Group, that's one thing that you can do um, to get some additional income, Uh, you can also invest, you know, a lot of times we think about um, becoming financially independent. And that's, this is one thing that I'm really passionate about, actually becoming financially independent. What is financial independence? A lot of people like, well, I don't, you know, I think financial independence, I got to have a million dollars in your bank account. No, I I love Tony Robbins. So uh, I went to his wealth mastery and he made it so simple. Financial independence is you having enough money that's sitting somewhere and it's making enough money to pay your house note, car note, insurance and food right now. So what we usually do is, as you know, Americans will work and we go get a car and we have that car payment and then we have to work to pay that car payment. But why wouldn't we work and save the money over here and then put it into an investment vehicles that's throwing off the car payment? Mm-hmm. Now we don't have, now the money's working for us, not us working to pay the car. Our money is working for us and paying the car note. And so that's one of the things I love about World Financial Group too, because you, we have investment vehicles that, you know, can help us get, have our money working for us instead of us working always to pay a house note or pay the car note. Let's let the money pay the house note. Let's let the money pay the car note. And so that's, that's how you become financially independent, in my opinion. Right, right. I'm thinking of the author, Robert Kiyosaki, who wrote a book called Cashflow Quadrant. And uh, of course, he's best known for Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I think he talks about the, the principle of leverage that you're describing there, you know, people trading time for money, uh, rather than leveraging their money or other assets to continue to support themselves. And so they're always scrambling, right? And so if, you know, in American families, sadly, we have, uh, you know, we're forced to have two incomes, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes the mom can't stay home and raise the family. uh, Or sometimes dad has to, you know, work 12, 16 hours a day, and he never gets to see his family, because everyone's always trying to scramble to just to pay their their bills instead of actually leveraging their assets. Right, right. It's, It's just, you know, it's a rat race. Like Robert Kiyosaki says, and how do you get out of the rat race? You know, I think we found the secret, though, you know, leverage and money to, mm-hmm. to pay ourselves. But, you know, I, I found it interesting. Uh, I was going through your website at QT Business Solutions, and, uh, you know, we started talking about how uh, you are a personal banker. And so you've probably seen firsthand so many entrepreneurs come to you saying, give me some money. I have this great idea. And when, when I think of entrepreneurs like that, I think of the show Shark Tank, right? And it, whether somebody has a good idea, has, you know, included the marketing, included the, they're always wanting money from these, these investor guys, but they haven't thought through everything. And so, mm-hmm. you know, um, was, was there, was just, there's something that happened in your banking career that says, you know what, I think that these people need more of an answer, more direction, more coaching that uh, I'm, I'm going to actually help them with. Yes. Well, you know, um, as an African American, you know, I saw a lot of African Americans coming to the bank getting declined because they simply did not know how to apply. So, you know, and I've, I've said, you know what, 
um, that it's kind of like more of a community building thing that I came up with because I'm like, you guys, they're really hardworking and, you know, and in, in our community, we're really, really, really hardworking, but we may not know how to uh, do it. So I'll give an example of my grandmother. My grandmother's beautiful. You know, she passed on, um, you know, late uh, 2020 um, and she was a sharecropper. You know, so she she worked with her brothers um, on a on a farm and they share crop. And uh, after that, she became a business owner and she was a housekeeper for a long time. Uh, and she bought insurance policies for each of her grandbabies. But it was like a thousand dollar policy <laughs> for each of the grandbabies. And the lifetime, she paid on these policies for her lifetime, you know, mm -hmm. so even as, you know, in her 80s, she's still paying on these things. And she knew the, she knew what she knew. And she tried to do the best that she could do. Um, and, uh, you know, people in my community, we know what we know, but sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And I said, you know what, I can make a difference. I can help them understand and see it a different way and see this is how we have to do it so we can, you know, make our community better and get financial literacy out to our people so that we can actually, you know, leave legacies and things like that. Um, you know, and she, she, <laughs> I, I love my grandmother and I was like, Mama Jewel, that's what I call her, Mama Jewel. I'm like, why are you paying on, you know, for years, hundred, you know, at least 40 years on $1,000 policies for, for, and she had five of them, one for each of her grandbabies. Um, you know, and I, as I was older, I'm like, Mama Jewel, why are you doing this? She was like, I want to give this to you, you know, and she wanted, but someone sold my grandmother that, and someone sold somebody else's grandmother a million dollar mm -hmm. legacy and generational policy that probably costs about the same thing over a lifetime. You see what I'm saying? So you know what you know, and you don't know what you don't know. And I, I kind of took that as, okay, they're coming to the bank, they're in business, I got to help them realize how we had a plan first before we go and look for a business loan. We have to, they, you know, that bank is an investor too, like a shark tank. They want to know that you can pay them back. If you don't know what you're, if you don't know how much you need and why you need it, they're not going to see that you can pay them back. They're in it for profit. So you have to show the investor, even the bank, that you're going to be profitable. You know, you're going to cash flow. These are things that you have to know. You have to learn about that when you're an entrepreneur. How do you plan for cash flow fluctuations in your company? It sounds hard, but it's not rocket science. It's just you got to learn a little bit. And that's why I kind of, that's why I formed QT Business Solutions. Right. You know, we uh, I've been taught that uh, the the modern educational system in this country, uh, you know, maybe four states out there, maybe a couple more uh, teach some kind of financial education. And so you, you get out of high school and, you know, you apply for college, that's what most people do. And and, you know, at that point in time, you don't have any money. You don't really understand money. And, and the first person that says, I'll give you, you know, a free T-shirt if you sign up for this credit card, yeah. they, they sign up for the credit card. And not only now they're in college, they have credit card debt and they have yes. uh, uh, education expenses, debt, and, and they come out of school, maybe they bought a car. And so, you know, they're, they're out of school. They have uh, hundreds of thousands, if not more money in debt. They have no real education about money. And, you know, they, they have a job working at Starbucks somewhere, right? That, that's why I think a, a service that you provide is very valuable, not only for the African-American community, but I think just the community at large. And uh, I, I really, I find it interesting that in your business in QT business solutions that you have uh, classes that you provide, you teach people about different kinds of grants that they can apply for things that I never even heard of uh, that are that exist out there. And I think that's a great resource for people. Yeah, it's so fun. Uh, I, I do a lot of research on pitch competitions, um, it, business grants. Um, so here's one for your viewers. Uh, if you are in, um, if you have a like a state unemployment agency, uh, like Michigan has Michigan Works, sometimes they'll pay for your employees to work with you 
for 90 days, they'll pay them $10 an hour, 40 hours a week for 90 days. Hmm. And then uh, so they have two programs, a youth program. So 18 to 24, where, you know, they, they pay them. And then after the 90 days, you can hire them directly, or you don't have to hire them. And that gives that youth 90 days of work history. So when they actually go to apply for a job, they'll have work history. Okay. And so that works like a grant for, you know, a, a small business owner, because you would have had to pay $10 an hour, 40 hours a week, and you didn't have to <laughs> for 90 days. Or, and they have the other one that's um, above 24, you know, for people that might have been long-term on, you know, uh, a cash assistance and food assistance, uh, where the, you pay them up front. And that, that's actually, you probably met my assistant, Jennifer. That's how I got her. And they, I paid her and then uh, 40 hours a week. And then they reimbursed me uh, for 90 days of her salary. So I paid one month, then they reimbursed it back. And then I pay another month. So it was like I kept taking their money and paying it again for 90 days. And then now I got a fully great employee at my, at my office that's totally trained and I didn't have to pay for the training, you know, uh, out of my dollar. So that's a grant thing. Uh, I won the Facebook uh, Black Business Grant. There's one coming out right now. There's another one. It's called Comcast Rise. So just Google that. I won that. I got like $10,000 worth of advertising. My commercial was on like, if I got, I got customers or people calling me, say, I just saw you on MSNBC. And I'm like, <laughs> really? And it was like real good advertising. So you might want to, um, you know, take that. You got to have a good commercial already created, but, um, and they make you upload that. But then once that's done, they kind of run it. I, I saw people said that I was, that they were at the um, sports bar and it was doing like major football games so you know it, it was kind of nice to have that those are some grants that your viewers or listeners can kind of google comcast rise uh is one and then if you want to contact your local um state unemployment agency for employers to try to see if there's some grants for that so now people come to you and they have no knowledge of any of these grants and you just sit down and listen to their story and say, okay, which, which grant program will best fit your situation? How does that work exactly? Yeah, most of the time, that's what we do. Uh, we will talk to our clients about, you know, their business. Mm -hmm. Most of the time we're, we're going to be putting a business plan together and we're going to be applying for something called a micro loan or a loan at a CDFI. Uh, that those are fun. That's funds available for small business owners that may not have been in business for a long time. And if you tried to go to a traditional bank, you would get declined. Sometimes they need you to be in business for a year. Um, I could do startups as long as they have been at their job for six months. Okay. So as long as they've been at your job for six months, we're able to do um, business funding for a startup. They have to have a 575 credit score or better, not 60 days past due on their IRS debt, child support, or student loans, and some other requirements. But as long as they fit that, we're pretty much able to get them a small business loan from a CDFI or a micro lender. Um, and then also, um, I do a live on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and I showcase new grants every Tuesday and Wednesday. Awesome. That's a great resource. Now, obviously, you've run this business for about 20 years. Uh, is there a specific type of business that you cater to, or have you worked with uh, numerous types? So numerous types. Um, I, I do a lot of salons, a um, lot of salon openings. I've done IT uh, staffing companies, a lot of staffing company startups, janitorial startups. Um, you know, a lot of times janitorial services, a lot of people don't know the government buys a lot of janitorial services. So that that us uh, that that um, state office, the state police will hire janitorial services. Mm. Uh, your city, your city uh, schools that are owned by the city, though, those get cleaned by, you know, local contractors or state contractors that are small businesses in the area. And then you got your, you know, uh, there was one out here, NASA uh, in White Lake, it was a janitorial contract all those contracts go out to small businesses. So a lot of businesses don't know that the government has to um, put 
uh, those out to anything less than, I think it, it used to be a hundred thousand, but I think in anything less than $200,000 now have to go out to a small business first. And if small businesses don't apply to do it, then the larger businesses can bid on those jobs, uh, on those contracts, but why not let us get the contracts? And so you mm. just have to go ahead and, you know, register to be a vendor on the, um, uh, on FBO.gov. And then um, on SAM.gov, just register to be a government vendor and then apply for those uh, contracts. They buy everything, but they buy a lot of janitorial services. So start up janitorial services, get government contracts. Okay. I have a, uh, somebody in my network who has a cleaning service. Say, uh, so he hires, uh, you know, maids and uh, I don't know what the politically correct term for a maid would be, but, you know, so he has a, a service like that. So this might be a valuable resource yeah, for him yeah, too. custodial services. Custodials, there you go. Mm. So, you know, I, I'm sure you've had some people come to you with some crazy pitch ideas. What, what can you share, like, what the craziest business idea you've had was? Oh, wow. You put me on the spot with that one. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I get a lot. Um, sometimes we have to rein people in and say, let's go for something that the bank's going to give us money for. Oh, man. Uh, I wish you had. <laughs> the craziest pitch, Lord, I, I can't. Now I'm just doing a blank because there, there have been some that we were like, no, this is just not going to work. I'm going to tell you one that I liked that was new that we actually went and wrote the business plan for and we're in the process of getting funded. Uh, it's a selfie museum. I had never heard of a selfie museum. A selfie and, museum, okay. Oh, selfie museum. You just it's just a, a spot that has like different um, like scenes painted on the back of the wall and you can pay to get interest in, in uh, entrance into there. And then you can just take selfies. Interesting. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> and then we did some research and found that it was a thing. They have one open up in Atlanta. It was very um, successful. So we actually did the research and we're in the process of getting that one funded. So that one was a weird one that we had never done before, but um, we, we ended up going to do that one. <laughs> well, you know, since the advent of like the internet, people have done all kinds of crazy things to make money. And so I, I heard a story about a person who on YouTube is really just opening business cards on YouTube. And just examining the deck of cards that they got, the, the baseball cards, and, and they're bringing in, you know, a high six-figure income from doing that. So, you know, in today's technological era, I think any kind of business idea that uh, if, if there's a following, somebody can actually make money with. Right. <laughs> well, they they sold pet rocks, so if you can <laughs> if you can sell a pet rock, <laughs> you can pretty much make a business out of anything. <laughs> right. Right. Well, Tina, you know, I, I definitely want to uh, to talk a little bit about the, the second business. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard enough for somebody to run one business, but, uh, you know, you've managed to actually have two successful businesses. Now, I can relate to this, uh, the second business, because that's where you and I met. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had a career in the financial services industry for a while. And I, you mentioned, you know, Mr. King before, and, you know, I know him personally. And of course, uh, our mutual uh, trainer mentor uh, is, uh, I'm going to lovingly call him the financial ninja right now. Just for <laughs> He was on my podcast earlier, the financial ninja. But, uh, you know, I, when I saw you in Orlando, Florida, you were explaining to me how you, you run this second business and uh, you only doing it 10, 10 hours a week, but yet you've managed to pull a six figure income with that business. So how, how do you, how do you balance having a full-time business and, an, and a part-time business? You know what? Uh, running both like a business. Um, so at my Royal Financial Group business, the, the system is, I do a lot of what's called matchup. Mm. So matchup means um, basically instead of me trading my time and talking to different customers, I would, you know, kind of partner with someone like you that are that's licensed already and know what you're talking, you know what you're talking about. Um, you would treat my client really well. You would treat them the way I would treat them. I would match up to um, my client with someone like you. And then you would 
take the time, do the uh, appointment with the person, and then uh, we get split the commissions. So I did the work of getting the client in, and then I matched them with a person that they would like, a personality that they would like, and that someone that's very knowledgeable and would treat my client the same way I would treat them. And, and basically, it, it allows me to delegate that time to uh, spend with the client to someone else. And I'm still able to um, get the amount of revenue that I get at working 10 hours a week. So my 10 hours a week um, consists of, uh, I go to a meeting on Tuesdays um, for Well Financial Group. I go to a meeting on Thursday evening. And then on Saturday, I do um, uh, the uh, meeting and then recognition and then my personal team meeting. On, and so that's about six of my hours. And then the other four hours are me talking to potential clients, um, prospecting, and then matching them up to the right person. So uh, a lot of your time is, uh, is training and developing people that you can leverage for your different businesses. You mentioned okay. somebody who can do 80% of what you can do. Uh, so, you know, how do they get to that 80%? They, they have to go through some kind of system training and, and things of that nature, right? Yes, yes. So most of the time, if I've trained them and I know that they're going to treat my client the way I want to, uh, my client to be treated, they have to be knowledgeable, you know, um, as knowledgeable as I am, or even more. I find in World Financial Group, there's people that are more knowledgeable than I am that I could actually match up to as well. So that helps because now I don't have to worry. Like they, they spend the time learning more and I know a lot, but you don't know everything. So I match up with actually, you know, at World Financial Group, you're able to match up with experts in that area or specialists sometimes. So all I have to do is get to know my client really well, kind of figure out exactly what they need and match them up with a specialist that knows more than I do. And then we split the business clients happy because they learned find that they learned stuff that they never learned before in their entire life nobody ever told them mm -hmm. and then now we're we're uh they're they're not paying us the clients you know get the free financial needs analysis for free and they don't even pay us out of their money the companies that they select pay us a, a marketing fee for showing our clients what these financial products can do for them. And so the client just got the service completely free and we got paid from the um, you know, carrier or the provider. It's a win-win for everybody. Yeah, you know, it, it seems like it's a, a natural fit, your first business with consulting entrepreneurs and then the, the second business with uh, World Financial Group, you, you're teaching not only business owners, but individuals how to actually better uh, take care of their money and make better decisions. What what are what are some of the practices that you you teach people in that in that business? So, um, uh, basically, how to even the same thing that I was saying earlier, how to leverage your money so that you become financially independent. Um, how you find um, how do you find vehicles or what vehicles can you use that actually gets you gains and, and you know, crediting that is in your benefit where you don't lose money, you can't lose money, but you could possibly get a, you know, higher rate of return. Uh, those are things that a lot of people don't know about, especially entrepreneurs, because entrepreneurs, you'll work your whole life you might, if you had a job, they probably had you put some stuff into a 401k. But entrepreneurs, they're not making you put something into 401k. So you have to think about these things because at some point, you're not going to be able to do your business. When you, you know, yes, as we're young, we have to, you know, we're, you know, we're healthy. But if something happens, what are we going to do? We have to shut down our business. So we don't have that revenue anymore. We have to plan as entrepreneurs prior to that happening. Um, I have a, a, a customer, she's a hair salon um, mm -hmm. and she was doing, uh, she was doing hair and she got sick. When she got sick, she was unable to do hair you know, and then now she's getting closer to, you know, retirement age and she didn't have any retirement together. So we're helping her out with that. But at the same time, these are things that if she had a thought of, you know, 30 years ago, you're not going to be doing hair when you're 80. You have to plan for this. 
So right, you know, right. we gotta we, we gotta help our people learn those financial concepts. Yeah, and be able to use that that leveraging again and uh, and, and create a residual or passive income stream. Yes, because I think that's probably one of the the biggest uh, hangups for people, especially as they re- uh, approach retirement age, and you know they may not have saved enough money or they may not have a plan for the future. Uh, the average life expectancy now is approaching 80 years old. And I've seen people live to, to 90 or hundred. Yeah. If they stop, if they stop working at 65, that can be 20, 30 years of, uh, of living expenses. But if they haven't planned, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be out of luck because, you know, we can't rely on that, uh, that check from the government every single month. Uh, yeah. They might stop social security and then social security was never meant to be your entire income. And there's people just living off of social security income. Some people are living off of 600 or a thousand dollars a month. You know, that's not, if you're an entrepreneur, you've been working your whole life, you deserve to live off of more than a thousand dollars a month. You need to be having at least five, seven thousand dollars, you know? So we got to plan for that and make it happen. You know, a lot of people in this country, sadly, maybe it's just poor economic uh, understanding or, you know, I blame the school system again, but, uh, you know, for somebody who becomes successful, they, they've worked their whole life to get to a certain point, but people don't like the, the wealthy people in this country or, you know, the people who work hard. They're, they're, what do you say to somebody? It's like, well, why are you jealous that I worked my whole life to, to make an income to protect and provide for my family, but you're out there struggling and you're mad at me about that. Yeah. I, I feel like, um, I feel like sometimes maybe we don't understand you know, we want more money. I know someone that doesn't have a lot of money um, and struggling want more money. So um, we also, I do understand too um, that sometimes more wealthier people might not want a regular Joe Blow to learn how to leave legacy because if the regular Joe Blow, if all the regular Joe Blows leave a million dollars to their kids, their kids are not going to be growing up working in the plant. They'll own the plant. So who's going to be working? Who's going to be working? So you have to, you know, so it's, it's, I don't think it's by accident. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, you need workers. So you've got to be able to get yourself, you know, into a a realm and say, I'm going to become, you know, uh, financially literate. I'm going to find out what the top 3% in America, you know, what they're doing. And then I'm going to do it for my family. And then my kids are going to own the plants when when I leave, or my grandkids are going to own all of the land, you know, and things like that. Not all of the land, but a lot of the land, you know, and then I'll rent it out to some people, you know, so you got to just kind of not, it's not being selfish, you know, you have to just learn. We got to, we got to do this for ourselves. Nobody is going to do it for us. And we have to be able to kind of let people see who is going to do that for you. Nobody is, you have to do it for yourself. You have to learn yourself. Yeah, and that's I think that's a that's a mindset hack right there. You, mm-hmm. know, you you have to be around people who are going to help you understand those values that will help you grow into those values. I, I've heard it that you know you become the average of the five people you hang out with the most. Yes. So if you're hanging out with a bunch of broke people who are complaining all the time, well, you're just gonna fit in line with them, you know. But if you're hanging out with successful people, uh, people who have vision, people who have more ambition than you do, uh, people who are going somewhere, then you're probably gonna you know, go the same direction as them. Right, right. And, and you know what, I want to hang out with people that make millions of dollars. That's what I'm trying to see. (laughs) And that's why I like about World Financial Group too, because I've never been in a business where the people that make millions of dollars a year are talking to us every day and helping us, you know, learn. Because I, you know, I, they, actually you know we have their phone numbers they're like yeah yeah i'll tell you what i did you know and then like look i joined in 2019 july of 2019 i made my first 100k in 2020 uh 2021 you know and then i was over 100k again uh well no 2020 was my first 100k year and then uh then i was over it again in 2021 um and it was just because people cared about me 
that that and I'm hanging out with people that make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and I just do the same thing that they're doing and I just have to get a little bit better and kind of observe and I I'm able to observe other places where do you hang out with people that make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year um you know we we're hanging out with people that make millions of dollars a year in personal income you know it's just not even the same realm of reality as you know regular you know things like i've never done that before in my life until i joined the world financial group mm -hmm. it's crazy so now kind of a follow-up question to that would you attribute your success to the network that you have the uh, the associations you have or the business model or is there anything else i would attribute my success to i'm a hard worker i i'm i think i'm a good strategist too because i will find a way i would find the rules of the game and I play the rule. I play, I'm, I'm a rule. I like rules. Okay. If you give me the rules, I'm going to win. <laughs> like that, if, if I don't have rules, then I'm probably not going to do that great. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like a S personality. I know that your, your listeners probably don't know that what that means, but that means that I like rules. I like following rules. If you give me like a plan, I, I'm going to read the whole instructions and, and then I'm going to do that. Um, so I would, uh, I would, I would say that I follow rules really well, and that's why I'm successful. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, diverge a little bit just to explain to my audience because I do have a lot of libertarian-minded people here who are, are somewhat anti-authority, and what you <laughs> what you're explaining is not the same thing. When when you have rules of a system, you know, a good example is you know the grants that are out there. They're legal. They're in the system. You're able to find them and to use them. When, when you understand a game like Monopoly, you can go back to Monopoly. If you understand how Monopoly works, where you can uh, acquire properties and you can leverage properties. And if you know, if you know the, the confines of that system, you can leverage that system to your advantage. Yeah. It's not about following rules just because there are rules that are written. That right. Hurt you or other people. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just like the Matrix, you know, you know, the, it was now this. I don't even know if this in there, but I'm going to say it anyway. In the Matrix he can bend the rules of the of the game you know mm -hmm. he can he can rewrite the code but he had to know the code first in order to rewrite it and change it you know so that that that's my little i love i'm a nerd i love um, <laughs> i love that kind of stuff <laughs> well you know the matrix was a documentary back in 1999 so <laughs> okay <laughs> i just threw that one at you just because you're like whatever well, you know, Tina, I, you know, I really appreciate this conversation. I think that there, there's some great uh, hidden messages in here. And, uh, you know, for people who uh, associate with the right people, who understand the rules of the game, who work hard, who plan for success, I don't think there's any reason why a, uh, if you call them a Joe Blow. If a Joe Blow would follow those things, they probably could find success. Would you agree with that? I mean, I would there, there's, there's not really a personality type that's more successful than others. No, actually, I find that. You know, the, the regular Joe Blow is, makes it to the richest part at World Financial Group. I'm like, man, I, I need to just follow more directions, you know. But yeah, that it doesn't, not one person, not one personality is it's better or worse. If you know the rules of the game and you just kind of do it, you'll be successful. Well, Tina, I want to let you plug your business once again, but I just want to leave with this thought. Um, you know, on your website, you have a bunch of testimonials from uh, from business owners and people you helped, and it, that just has to make you feel happy that uh, you know you've been able to make such an impact in people's lives. Yes, yep. My website is qtbizsolutions.com. That's Queen Tom Boy Igloo Zebra Solutions.com. And I do have a lot of uh, clients on there, client testimonials that we've helped for over the years. I'm so proud that we have been able to help people navigate um, at getting business funding for their startup or their small business so that they can scale and get to the next level. Awesome. Now, are you only in the Detroit, Michigan area or is your business uh, or businesses expanding all over the country? Uh, all over the country. So we help people get a micro loan or a uh, or through a CDFI, and that's federal program. So it's all over. We have clients in Chicago, you know, Texas, 
you know, can, uh, Maryland, everywhere, everywhere you think if you if you're in the United States, I can help you. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I would advise everybody within the sound of this podcast to uh, if you are an entrepreneur or if you are struggling to understand how to uh, make ends meet. Uh, you know, Tina Williams is a great asset. I, I think that she's that you're definitely an inspiration to me and, uh, you know, hardworking woman that wants to that really wants to help people. I love it. <laughs> I have one last question for you, Tina. Are you Invictus? I am Invictus! Excellent. I appreciate your time, Tina, and I want to wish you a, a great day, and, uh, and, and thank, thank you for this conversation.